Hello, I'm Dr. James Thomas. Welcome to Laryngology 101, a series of videos about your vocal cords and your voice. In this video, I'd like to talk about the concept of reflux laryngitis and how it might or might not affect your vocal cords. The concept is very widespread that reflux in the form of LPR, laryngopharyngeal reflux, or GERD, G-E-R-D, gastroesophageal reflux disease, commonly causes hoarseness. Yet in my experience of 10 years as a laryngologist, I've really not encountered reflux laryngitis. At least that's to say, I don't find reflux to be a cause of hoarseness. I think the first thing we have to do is define what hoarseness is. And for me, hoarseness is the concept of unwanted air escape between the vocal cords. That is, when you have air leak that's not wanted, you sound hoarse. Well, let's take a look in this video at that concept and some of the presumed findings that people attribute to reflux. Specifically, pachydermia, redness, and vocal cord ulcers are the most frequently named findings that seem to be attributed to reflux laryngitis. One of the problems I found with the 60% of patients who come to me with the diagnosis of reflux laryngitis and or being already on medication for reflux is that they haven't improved with treatment of that diagnosis. I've always been able to find a mechanical explanation for their hoarseness. And when I find that mechanical explanation and address the problem with that mechanical explanation, it corrects the hoarseness. Let's begin by taking a look at some of the findings attributed to reflux. Interarytenoid pachydermia is a term used to denote thickness of the skin between the arytenoids. And here in the lower picture, we see obvious thickening. And in the top picture, it's quite thin. Now let's listen to the voices. There's clearly audible air leak or hoarseness, but we have to ask ourselves, what is this from? And in this case, vocal nodules are the cause. There's air leak in front of and behind the nodules. Now let's listen to the other larynx, one with clear pachydermia who's been told that her hoarseness is from reflux. While we're listening to it, let's ask ourselves, why is there air leak? Perhaps the pachydermia is keeping the vocal cords from coming completely together, or perhaps it's the polyps. I elected to treat the polyps. I used the pulse dye laser to shrink the left vocal cord polyp down in size. Let's listen to her voice. So effectively, we've improved our signal to noise ratio. We increased the signal by improving the vibration on one vocal cord, and we've reduced the noise, that is, we've reduced the air leak. I don't find that interarytenoid pachydermia keeps the vocal cords from coming together. And with removal of one of the polyps, the vocal cords come closer together, and the hoarseness is improved. Take this case here, obvious swelling in the interarytenoid area. The back of the vocal cords close completely. It's the bump in the middle that's keeping them from closing and allowing air to escape. I don't think it matters whether or not interarytenoid pachydermia is even present or what causes it. I think what does matter is how well one finds the etiology for allowing air escape. Despite being told twice that she had a normal exam, this voice sounds pretty hoarse. There's interarytenoid pachydermia all right, but is that what's causing the air leak? Inhaled steroids allow fungus to grow and fungus causes stiffness of the mucosal wave. So there's a lot of air leak relative to the vibrations. After treatment, we see the vocal cord has cleared up and that will allow it to vibrate better. It won't matter what happens in the interarytenoid area. Redness is a nearly universal claim supporting the diagnosis of reflux laryngitis. Yet, mucosa is red in everyone. The color red does not impair vibration nor cause an air leak. So when I hear the diagnosis of laryngitis due to a red larynx, especially red arytenoids, because arytenoids don't vibrate, I suspect the physician has not looked close enough to find the cause of the air leak. Let's explore red larynx more closely. The closer we get, the more detail we can see. And in this case, we see that the redness is caused by dilated capillaries. And if we get close enough, we can see there's a white film covering up some of those red vessels. So the additional blood in the vocal cords and the white film on top make it stiff and cause air leak. 
After treatment for fungal laryngitis, the vocal cords clear, vibrate smoother, and the hoarseness goes away. Ulcers of the vocal process are thought to be possibly due to reflux, but I find mechanical trauma to be a much more likely explanation. I frequently see ulcers in cases of vocal cord incompetence, in particular in paralysis. In this case of a bilateral paralysis, when we look closely, we can see the ulcers form on the vocal process. In this case, I stop the trauma of the closure by injecting Botox into both the vocal cords. And two weeks later, the vocal process ulcers are healing. In a slightly more complex case, this patient has a laryngeal web ultimately caused from dysplasia. He develops ulcers after a time from forceful phonation. A biopsy reveals cancer and he's treated with radiation therapy. The radiation therapy makes the web go away and then over a much longer period of time as speaking becomes easier, the vocal ulcers heal. So while the cancer, the dysplasia, and the web resolved rapidly on the radiation therapy, the vocal cord ulcers heal much slower long as ago, speaking becomes easier. It was easier to travel on water than on land. Sometimes our technology can create the illusion of a problem where a problem doesn't exist. In particular, with flexible fiber optic technology, there is a graininess or fuzziness, as well as a change in the color of the picture that can lead one to an erroneous conclusion. Let's take a look at an exam of a patient filmed both with rigid and flexible fiber optic technology. This patient complains of weakness and a hoarse voice. First, let's take a look at the rigid exam. Now, the flexible exam. Everything is much more red. The medial aspect of the arytenoids is very, very red in this patient. It almost looks like they have ulcers behind the redness. But let's go back to the rigid exam. The clue to the air leak can be found there. The key is to get the patient to drop in pitch. Air leak that is worse at low pitch than highs is glottic incompetence and is a paresis until proven otherwise. So let's take a look with our flexible scope closer. When we advance to the posterior commissure, we see there's no strength on the left side. This is a paresis of the anterior branch of the recurrent laryngeal nerve. Since the superior laryngeal nerve is still working, at high pitches, there's very little air leak, and at low pitches, there's a great deal of air leak or hoarseness. In summary then, hoarseness is air leak, not color of the vocal cords. Hoarseness is due to a problem of the vocal cords, not the interretinoid area. The interretinoid area doesn't even vibrate. In broad terms, I think the mechanics of the, of the vocal cord can be broken down into three areas. The first is that nodules, polyps, or bumps or swellings on the vocal cords cause an air leak that gets worse as we go up in pitch because the bump stands out more and the air leaks on either side of the bump. Problems with bowing, weakness, paresis, or paralysis of the vocal cords often have secondary compensation. We get rid of that compensation by having the person speak low in their range and that will exacerbate the hoarseness and on laryngoscopy we can find the cause. Then concepts that do create inflammation such as infection, uh, fungal growth, these generally cause stiffness of the vocal cord and that allows air to leak between the vocal cords because they're so stiff. I think some of the problems in laryngology occur because we frequently use a flexible fiber optic laryngoscope which gives a somewhat fuzzy view. The second is that examiners tend not to get close enough to the vocal cords, that is the site where the air leak is occurring. They often don't record on video, and video allows the examiner to go back over in detail looking for the air leak. And lastly, I think there's a problem in understanding the concept that hoarseness is air leak, because once you know that, you can go looking in detail for that air leak. Thanks for listening, and if you have any further interest in the voice or vocal cords, please visit www.voicedoctor.net for more information on your vocal cords. I'm Dr. James Thomas.